The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACAN, is engaging in a series of meetings with all stakeholders in Hajj matters. This is part of the efforts by the Commission to guarantee heat free 2017 Hajj exercise. Towards this, NACAN met with officials of states, pilgrims, welfare boards, agencies, and commissions in Abuja. The meeting, which was chaired by NACAN chairman Abdullahi Mukhtar, discussed, among other issues, the 50% remittance to Nakan by states, accommodation in Medina and Mecca, basic travel allowance, pilgrims education, national medical team concept, aviation matters, seats allocation to states and tour operators, others are licensing of states pilgrims boards, stakeholders meeting, and hardware collection. On the hardware issue, Jai's Bank has been approved to take charge and is expected to meet stakeholders to come up with modalities for implementation. Satisfied with all arrangements from the states, the meeting asked them not to relent in making 2017 Hajj exercise successful. While commenting on the reforms being taken by NACON on different aspects of Hajj management, some state officials expressed their support, especially on the aspect relating to accommodation. Uh, without the reform, the urge of fear will not be something that a common man will be able to afford. But the reform has brought a lot of things. Uh, part of it is that the urge of fear will go down. And apart from that, there are many other advantages that are attached to it. And the issue of uh, corruption or whatever, and the issue of fear something, that one will soon be a thing of the past. First and foremost, it will eliminate uh, all these, uh, what they call middlemen, in escalating the, the high cost of uh, accommodation. This one, uh, the original owners uh, being taken over by, from uh, this person to that person. So by the time the uh, Hajj uh, are looking for the, the price of the accommodation, it has gone through about two, 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 uh, five steps, sometimes even ten steps. So with the, with the effort of the chairman and uh, the National High Commission, I think they are trying to get to the, to the real owner so that we will know the price and then by that it will be cheaper. In the meantime, Nakan chairman has led state pilgrims officials on an inspection tour of the new building expected to serve as the headquarters of the National Hatch Commission of Nigeria. It is located in Abuja central area. The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakan, has called on Hajj officials in the country to ensure that pilgrims provide their national identification numbers at the point of registration, saying it is a prerequisite for the issuance of visa to pilgrims. The head of ICT of the commission, Dr. Ashur Daura, stated this during a meeting between Nakan and heads of state pilgrims welfare boards. Dr. Ashiru stressed that NACON would do its best to ensure that the process for registration is hitch free, urging Hajj managers across the country to mobilize pilgrims for the exercise. The Niger State Pilgrims Welfare Board has refunded over 51 million naira to the state 2015 Hajj pilgrims. The chairman of the board, Al Haji Idris Adamu, stated this during the presentation of checks to the 25 local government chairmen of the state, saying the refund was for services not rendered by service providers in Saudi Arabia. The chairman said, National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakon, whose officials ensured that all money for services not rendered are recovered and taken back to pilgrims, gave the money back to the board for refund. He explained the payment was in tranches, saying 21 million was released for the first batch and 30 million was also paid for the second batch, bringing it a total of 51 million naira. While addressing the Niger State Pilgrims Board members, Al Haji Idris Adamu hinted that efforts are being made by the state government for a hit free Hajj operation. <laughs> As the Central Bank of Nigeria continues to open exchange windows to ease dollar access for various segments of the economy, 
the Association of Hajj and Umrah Operators of Nigeria has called on the bank to include its industry in this policy. The national president of the association, Al Haj Abdul Fattah Abdul Majid, made the call during its Southwest Zone General Meeting in Lagos. The president said involving them in this plan will enhance their business operations and make the observance of Hajj and Umrah less cumbersome. He then lauded the federal government for the role it is playing in Hajj operations across the country. <laughs> Saudi Arabia's Deputy Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has confirmed that the fees for 2017 Hajj and Umrah visas will not exceed $13. Being the chairman of the Council for Economic Development, Prince Salman stressed that the Council is paying great attention to pilgrims in an effort to give them all the necessary facilities needed to perform the rights of Hajj and Umrah with ease. He said more plans are underway to provide the opportunity for the largest number of Muslims to perform pilgrimage as one of the essential duties of Islam. Hajj operations in Nigeria has always been a challenging affair, arising from poor planning and execution of programs and policies where preventable lapses have had crippling effects on Hajj operations. The major fundamental challenge is that has been bedwilling the Hajj administration in Nigeria right from the time we have an ad hoc arrangement when we have a directorate of pilgrims affair by then it's because of lack of early preparation and why is it constitutes a major factor in inhibiting the success of Hajj is this Hajj is an annual event where over 180 countries converge in a single city for the purpose of uh, one event so all the services rendered in this particular holy city of Saudi Arabia are paid for in advance. It is a very tedious uh, process. So that is why you see before, Hajj operation is now synonymous with a sorry to say, like uh, a big cool child where the more you try to succeed, the, the more it becomes possible because of what? Lack of early preparation. It all boils down to improper preparation from the beginning. When you don't prepare on time or when you, as the white man says or as the Englishman says, when you fail to plan, you have planned to fail. When you don't prepare on time, definitely you, you, you encounter problems. Maybe in the course of what you're doing or towards the end of what you're doing. You just have to encounter problems when you don't prepare on time, when you don't uh, prepare properly. So I believe it has to do with preparation. When the preparation is on time and it is proper, when there's a proper preparation, I believe we will not have problem. For organizers of Hajj exercises, preparation starts mainly with the following. Payment for registration, securing accommodation in Saudi Arabia among others, contracting the air carriers, acquiring visa and BTA. But how and when these activities are carried out makes the difference between success and failure. If being, uh, you, the, the, the Saudi authority used to give the number of the people they expect from each country to perform the, the Hajj. If we quickly registered our people at the earlier, earlier, earliest time, I believe the issue of uh, uh, obtaining visa will be a, a, a thing uh, of pass. Initially, we do bid for the visa. We look for visa at detail and why other countries have already got in there. Hajj seat says signal the commencement of a Hajj seat. And if you don't do it early, it actually obstructs other plans. Hajj is a timeline event in the sense that Arafat has a specific date. And the Arafat itself is what we can say okay, is synonymous with Hajj. If Arafat has a specific date, if a particular timeline is sacrificed because of lack of preparation, so it will affect other plans before the Arafat day 
face of Hajj seat, for example, documentation of a pilgrim traveling uh, this thing, uh, screening of medical medical needs uh, of uh, of pilgrims, enlightenment campaign for all these uh, pilgrims. Now, before you will now commence even the air lift of uh, pilgrims. Talking about BTA, this is a recurring problem. I believe it has occurred several times. When we went last year, there are states that were complaining of collecting just part of their BTA and part has not been paid. Some will say uh, there is an amount that has been slashed from their BTA and the rest. Some will even say they have not gotten it yet, but not, not, not many, just a few. So, uh, you see, I believe the Hajj Commission should put a standard rule that so, so and so time this money has to be given to pilgrims. Coming from this background, experts suggest that preparations for the next Hajj should commence immediately after the completion of the preceding one. Early preparation for any Hajj starts immediately after the completion of uh, uh, Hajj by reviewing the sources and failure of the present year, we help them to prepare uh, early in the subsequent, uh, I mean, in the following year of uh, Hajj. So it's very, very important for uh, early preparation immediately after the completion of the uh, Hajj operation. In my view, the, the preparations should begin as soon as the previous Hajj ends. That is where the preparation should begin. Because, as you might know, uh, proper preparation prevents poor performance. So in order not to have a poor performance of the succeeding Hajj, then the preceding Hajj, as soon as it ends, you begin the preparation for the succeeding Hajj. I believe the moment we come back from Hajj, preparation for next year's Hajj should start. You don't wait until you have months to the time. Early preparations of Hajj through proper planning of human and material resources, the experts emphasize, will help to overcome the many operational setbacks faced over the years. Issue of accommodation in Saudi Arabia. There are almost 3.7 million people gathering in the city of Mecca. And all these people will be accommodated in houses that are less than 13,000 the approved accommodation by Saudi Hajj Regulatory uh, Agency and they contain not less than 2 point something million people. Now for Nigerian pilgrims over 76,000 to be able to accommodate it within this area you have to go there early and pay earlier and a couple what issue of a documentation. This problem of the e track from Saudi and other information it will be tackled because you have almost almost a year to prepare so you you have a room you have that window for yourself for 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 nigeria Hajj commission to communicate effectively with saudi to communicate effectively with the uh, state pilgrims welfare boards and see how they coordinate and where there are problems then they see how they solve it where the problem is with the center of the of attraction that is the the, the, the intended uh, intended pilgrim himself then they will be able to call him because they, they will have his contact phone number, other addresses, they will have it, then they will be able to solve it because they have almost a whole year. The issue of BTA, you know, BTA involves uh, uh, foreign currencies like uh, Saudi Riyadh and, do and dollars and we know what is happening in, in, in the world currently on the issue of these uh, uh, dollar. So if uh, the, the, the preparation heavily is being done properly, I believe the needed uh, uh, currency will be purchased make available at the right time when uh, yeah, it's needed. Fundamental to the success of any planning, say the experts, are effective communication and proper coordination among all stakeholders in Hajj matters. On the issue of having a comprehensive information dissemination mechanism within the Hajj uh, uh, cycle, and uh, what I mean is to be a proactive information and information that you need to know before the process coming not after the process because you are dealing with almost 76,000 with different background there should be 
open openness, open communication, synergy, that is coordination between the, the, the uh, uh, operators of the airlines, the State Pilgrims Welfare Board, and the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria. If there is that synergy, that is coordination, knowing when to do what, and who is to do what, and when. What are the duties of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria as the mother body? What are the duties of the uh, State Pilgrims Welfare Board? What are the duties of the uh, uh, carriers, the operators, airline operators? Everybody should have a stipulated, you know, categories of duties. And if you know my duty, I mean, I know my duty, you know your duty, and we are sincere to those duties, then we coordinate. There shouldn't be failure from you, there shouldn't be failure from me, then we coordinate. Definitely there is going to be minimal problem, if any. We need to develop uh, our information system because uh, communication is very, very important in anything you are doing in life. Even if you want to manage word, you need to have effective uh, communication. How do you have an effective communication by communicating earlier to the needed authority? for them to be able to work towards that uh, communication received by the agencies, by the government, or by the state hatch uh, operation. So uh, we, we, we thank to the uh, communication development of the world. We have several means of communication. Encouraging Hajj saving scheme and adopting the Malaysian way of having pilgrims on waiting list for at least five years are some of the innovations that can be introduced by NACON. For example, Indonesia, Pakistan and India has five-year Hajj rolling plan. What do I mean? If you want to go to Hajj in five years, you pay this year. If you want to, if I, last year it was on record that Indonesia had 400,000 places in waiting list. What did they mean by waiting list? They have paid, they have met all the criteria to go to Saudi Arabia and perform, but there is no seat. They will have to wait in the next five years, which means they have paid for all their services five years ahead of time. But what do we have in Nigeria? You have some time, three months to the commencement of a year leave. Some people will still go and pay for hard seat. The question is this, how do you pay for that particular pilgrim services of accommodation? airline ticket, uh, car syndicates, and other issues. So this is some of the challenges uh, that accompany with uh, uh, airlift of leaders. In the meantime, the current leadership at NACON under Barrister Abdullahi Mukhtar is determined to bring the change needed towards ensuring early preparations in Hajj operations. This already was witnessed in 2015 and 2016 Hajj exercises, which were adjudged the best ever Hajj exercise the nation has had. You will be tempted, if you are opportune to be one of the reporters of Hajj activities of 2016, you will be tempted to score the organizers of Nigerian Hajj activities in Saudi Arabia Hi, when I say Nigerian Hajj activities organizers in Saudi Arabia, uh, especially uh, National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakon, and the State Pilgrims Welfare Boards, they really tried actually. Hajj operation in Nigeria, Alhamdulillah, for this time around, for the past two years, it has been a wonderful uh, Hajj management uh, operation starting from uh, year 2015, 2016, most importantly, 2016, very, very uh, appreciative uh, management operation of that uh, 2016 Hajj operation. You can now see that uh, the airlift in the last three or four years has greatly improved. And it is on record that in the last five years or four years, Nigeria, Nigeria has never officially apply for extension of time before it could actually airlift its pilgrim. Specifically, since 2014, 2015, 2016, for example, Nigeria concluded its airlift four days to the closure of King Abdulaziz International Airport, to and fro. Those uh, airlines have 
have a kind of proved that they can do the job. So I, if you get people that can do the job and do it on time, at the time you expect them to do the job, I believe uh, it's okay. But when you get people that are not capable of doing the job and you give them the job to do just because you want them to do the job, that is where the problem is. The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria is embracing new ideas. Already, it has signed the 2017 Hajj MOU in Saudi Arabia that will allow NACON and state pilgrims boards to get all the necessary logistics in place. Safar and Marwa are two small hills located inside the Grand Mosque in Mecca. During Hajj, pilgrims pace between these two hills seven times, starting with Safar and finish the seventh with Marwa. The ritual of Safar and Marwa is based on commemoration of a mother's sacrifice for her son. It all started when Prophet Ibrahim brought Hajara and her son Ismail while she was suckling him to a place near the Kaaba under a tree on the post of Zamzam. He then left them there, obeying Allah's command as pioneers to start civilization, leaving them with nothing but a small water skin. After Hajara exhausted the water, she and her child became thirsty. She left him, for she could not endure looking at him. She found that the mountain of Safa was the nearest mountain to her and the next was Marwa. She paces between the two hills seven times in search of water for her son. Today, Muslims perform this to symbolize the bravery and sacrifice of Hajara. As part of completing the Hajj, Muslims must participate in this ritual. This act is known as Sa'i in Arabic. It is one of the pillars of Hajj and Umrah that pilgrims must perform while on pilgrimage. Without the Sa'i, Hajj is not complete until pilgrims make sacrifice with animals such as Ram. As pilgrims walk between these hills, they move a bit faster when they reach a point now marked with a green light and at each of the hills, pilgrims face the Kaaba for supplications. I don't know what the commission is doing this year to prevent... How often? Has the National Hatch Commission impact? How can they make it more comfortable? More At the national level, the National Hatch Commission of Nigeria, there are six days in which the Hatch rights are performed. We are, we are putting in place mechanisms to ensure that on each flight, at least we should have as much as possible a medical personnel to accompany the pilgrims and kids. From 2007, gone, this problem is gone. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said is this hat is compulsory at least once in a lifetime. <laughs>